Hello everyone, got another two PlayStation consoles, the first model, because even though I had it, there are many versions and I wanted especially the one with parallel port. I still don't have the very first model with audio video outputs, but at least for the moment I've got this one with parallel port and I'm very happy grabbing one. It's the 5000 series and it came along with the 7000 series. Both are used and in a pretty poor condition, but I'm gonna clean both of them and I thought this console deserves a video. As you can see, the difference is pretty obvious. This one has a parallel port, which is supposed to open a lot of options, as long as the other one has no such port. What parallel port did for the PlayStation deserves a different video, so about that we'll be talking later. One of them is extremely dusty and I can't even see a spider web there. And as expected, the eject button is jammed. No, the other one, the one I especially aimed for, has the same issue, the eject button doesn't work. So let's go for the cleaning. One screw on each corner, one here in the middle. One here on the upper right, another one in the middle, and one in the upper left. The screwdriver I'm using is a Philips one, and that's the only thing I'm needing, nothing more. PlayStation 1 had no cooler fan, so no thermal paste, and the whole cleaning process is extremely easy comparing with later consoles. However, it needs some patience. Once all black Philips screws are removed, we can uncover what's inside the first PlayStation. Here we have the optical drive. We'll disassemble everything. Let's begin with the cable which connects the motherboard with the power supply. Here are two Philips screws. So, this is the power supply, nothing fancy. Now here we have few screws. This one here. This can be ignored for now, however, I'll unscrew that too. One more here. And another one here. But firstly, let's unplug the optical drive. This ribbon cable. And this one too. This cable is for the module with controller ports and memory card slots. Now with the same Philips screwdriver, the screws mentioned before. This cable. So, here is the motherboard. Now, there are a couple more screws, for considering this one was previously unscrewed. With the motherboard removed, 
there's one more thing and that would be the module for the controllers and memory cards. and the last element is simply falling off. Now there is this contraption for the eject button. Two more Phillips screws and we're done. Here are two clips. And now the cleaning process. Firstly, a soft brush. and a cotton pad with some rubbing alcohol wherever is needed. Now the assembly, I do everything in reverse. The metal plate. The power supply. the motherboard the four required screws The two required screws for the PSU. There is one more screw on the other side of the parallel port. So there are two screws here, one more here, another two, and two more here. Now the last metal plate. Three Phillips screws.
and the module for the controllers. Two Phillips screws. the ribbon cable for the controller's module. The cable for connecting the motherboard to PSU. Now the optical drive. Firstly, the power cable. And now, the ribbon cable. Here, let's put back the eject button. two Phillips screws. Let's check the system. Now the spring for the on and off button. Yeah, seems to work fine and the last remaining button. I'm checking all the cables. And now the last remaining screws. Those are black. The last plastic cap and we're done. Yeah, this is the PlayStation 1, the 5000 series. Everything seems to work just fine so far, and I would say it looks great. Later series may be a bit different, motherboard may be a bit smaller. The eject button system may be a bit different too, 
but more or less the disassembly process is pretty much the same. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.